So today I'd like to talk to you about an ombre yarn I just tried. It has been out for a little while, but um, after using it, I just wanted to share my thoughts so that it might help you if you're deciding if you want to try to use it or what type of project you'd like to use it for. So if you would like to know about it, stick around. Before I get into and reveal what this yarn is, I thought I would tease you a little bit with my finished project. So many of my subscribers have found my channel through a video I did. Um, it was an ombre yarn showdown where I compared a Red Heart Super Saver ombre with the Karen Jumbo ombre. And I did really like both of those yarns. Um, I thought they were both great. Um, but for ombre effect, um, spoiler alert, um, I will link the video up here if you'd like to go watch it and you haven't yet. Um, but I had the Red Heart Super Saver ombre as my, my winner for the look. Now, obviously, like the Karen was softer and cushier and things like that. But this is like ombre is what I was judging it on. And um, I've got a yarn here that um, you've probably already heard about and seen and maybe you own it. Um, I know some of you have even used it, um, but I would like to share with you the Karen Ogo Halo. So I want to really highlight for you how beautiful this ombre is. Um, it starts out at like the creamiest green, um, which unfortunately that really is such a small portion. I wish it would have been a little bit longer. Um, and then it is called Rosemary, but um, it's definitely kind of like a minty here in the middle. And then I'll pull this down and make sure we're in the light here because um, this um, at the end, it is really beautiful. And I would say that is like a true rosemary color. So you can see there are, there is literally no, um, there are no lines of demarcation at all in this yarn. And I think that is really just stunning. Um, completely stunning that there's nothing there. Now I will say the downside to this would be if you're using more than one donut, um, you know, and you wanted it to ombre out the other direction, you would have to take from the like wrong end, my air quotes there, the wrong end of the donut. Um, so you might want to, if you have a ball winder, you know, be able to cake that up. Um, so it would be easier to work with, but I have really never seen an ombre that is that flawless. If you don't have um, this yarn in your stash or you haven't really looked at it, um, I'll go over the stats real quick with you. And um, so it does claim that it is a bulky number five. And um, when I started out, um, there is a clear end that you kind of want to pick from. And it's, in my case, it was the light end of the Ogo donut. And I know that's why um, some people don't really care for the Ogo, um, the way it's wound. Um, and if you are trying to pull from, I'm assuming they're all wound the same. Um, but on mine, if you would have tried to take it from the dark end, you would have been pulling from, you know, the tightest wound spot. And I think that's why sometimes people struggle, um, like, because you're trying to pull from the inside of it. Um, instead of going with the lighter end um, where it's wound on the outside and the cone goes that direction. Like there's clearly a direction the cone goes. So um, when I started using this, I had seen other videos uh, where we, uh, people had talked about um, it being more like a four. And I was like, I don't know. This definitely seems more like a five. Like I know the halo's making it a little bit bulkier, but it just, it seemed um, thicker and cushier, but as I went on and as I got into the darker portions of my scarf, um, it was definitely a four. Now, it may be because of the way it's wound, and if it was wound in more of like the traditional skein, um, you know, like I, I'm picturing like the, um, I don't know, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Anyway. Um, I don't know if it's because it was wound tighter around the cone shape that since this was the portion here that was like in the uttermost inside and wound the tightest that it kind of compacted it a little bit. Um, but this would definitely be a four. And it actually reminded me a bit of 
Yarnby's Chloe, which this was definitely thicker than the Chloe for sure, but it kind of had that same feel and effect. And yeah, as I got down here, um, and, and it got thinner, I was thinking that a little bit more. Um, like it's not roving yarn, but it's kind of roving yarn, if that makes sense. All right. It does say here to use a six millimeter hook, which would be a J10. And I did not, um, only for the purpose that I didn't have one handy and did not feel like hunting one down. Um, so I did use an I, a 5.5 for uh, my scarf. And um, I think that that was plenty loose enough. I didn't find that it was pulling or falling off my hook. Um, I thought that was just fine. And since this is for a winter garment, I definitely thought that even if it was a little bit tighter, I was okay with that. So this is 71% acrylic, 18% nylon, and 11% polyester. And I am a person who loves those polyester yarns, the Huga type, where they're like the real silky smooth ones. Um, and that's definitely not what this is. So um, it is a soft yarn. It is definitely a soft yarn, um, but it is definitely not like the Hugas. Um, I mean, it is soft, but it's not the same like buttery type of feeling as something with a larger polyester content. And then in the one Ogo, there are 481 yards. You're getting a decent amount of yardage for um, the skein. And, you know, since they have been out a little while, the price has come down. They started out at 10 bucks, and I definitely would not pay that. Um, currently today on Joann's, they are $5.99. There was a coupon where if you ordered it and then picked it up at the store, you got an additional 25% off. Um, I guess I just think, you know, um, for this scarf, um, this, you know, this was great. $6 for a scarf. That is awesome. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And it was just about the right length for me. Um, but like if you were to do a blanket, you would need a lot of these. Um, I mean, you would definitely need a lot to, um, this is like one, you know, one strip in there. So, and obviously the stitch would make a difference. So for my scarf that I did, I did a granny ripple. And uh, with this, um, I chained 36 and then you start right in on the ripple. Um, so actually it would be going the other way. It would be going like that. Um, and it was pretty easy. I mean, if you can count to three, you can definitely do this. Um, I'm actually going to be having a video coming out shortly. Um, I don't want to give it away yet, but I'm using this same stitch. So if you are um, newer to crochet, more of a beginner, um, I will in the upcoming video. Um, I'm wondering if I should just tell you what it is. I'm pretty excited about it. So if you have watched the show Wednesday, um, it's a take on the older Adams family. Um, crochet is featured in this show surprisingly more than a lot of other shows. And um, Wednesday and Enid, her friend, roommate, have um, snoods. So I am making, uh, I made a, the black Wednesday snood, but obviously that's not going to show up on camera. So fortunately, Enid is very colorful and I'm making an Enid one. Um, to show you. And so like if you are newer to crochet and you're not familiar with the Granny Ripple, um, if you're not subscribed, definitely subscribe because in that video I will have um, all of the directions um, for doing this particular stitch. So I would love it if you would subscribe. I want to thank you so much for joining me and talking yarn today. Um, I really appreciate it. And if this is your type of thing, I will go ahead and link a video right up here that I think you'll love. I'd love for you to check it out. Thanks for talking yarn with me, guys.